are hopefully going to finish up uh, section 4 of chapter 7 on vectors. It has been a weird, wonderful uh, ride so far. I have one last application example because we haven't done an example of what we refer to as static equilibrium. So now we know that uh, we can have more than one object acting upon, uh, more than one force acting upon an object. So if we have, so let's say, uh, F sub 1, F sub 2, all the way up to F sub n, all these different forces acting on an object, the object that's said to be in static equilibrium, if the resultant force, which is what you get when you add up all the forces, is equal to the zero vector. So we have two cranes and they support a 2,000 pound beam in static equilibrium as shown in this figure. I tried to draw the figure best I can. This little object here is the 2,000 pound beam. Find the magnitude of the tension vec uh, vectors. That would be here, the, the lines that go from the tops of the cranes to the beam. Uh, vector T sub 1, vector T sub 2, and we're going to round to the nearest pound. Now, what I have tried to draw here is the fact that this uh, uh, weight of this uh, beam is drawing downward, so that's a negative 2,000 times uh, J, because what happens is, uh, if you look at this angle, we're looking at 270 degrees, so the cosine of 270 degrees is zero, the sine of 270 degrees is negative one, that's why it's a negative times the 2,000, which was the magnitude, the 2,000 uh, pound weight of the beam. Also, I've gone ahead and stated the equilibrium because there are three forces. There's the weight of the beam, and there's the two tensions of the, of the cables that go from the cranes. And if we have a static, a state of equilibrium or a static equilibrium, then we're looking at all three of these uh, vectors adding up to be the zero vector. At least that's how I've defined it up here. Now, the two tension vectors, uh, we don't have the magnitudes but we'll go ahead and list those as the magnitude T sub 1 times the cosine of 45. Not because of this guy's 45, but because, let me use the pink one here, from the positive direction of the horizontal, this one is 45. And that would make for, ten, uh, for the second tension vector here, that would be 90 and 30, so that's 120. That's where these angles come into play here, and I've written them out in the component form. And of course, W, as I mentioned before, is negative 2,000 times vector J. So if I add up these three vectors, which is going to be a little bit of a pain, but I'll write it down here. And now I'm going to add these up, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in uh, the values here, because I know these values from my unit circle. So I have for the first one, for T sub 1, I have its magnitude times the cosine which is the square root of 2 over 2, times i, vector i, plus t sub 1, the magnitude, uh, also times the square root of 2 over 2, times vector j, that's this guy, right here, all that. Plus t sub 2, that's this guy here, and again, I'm going to plug in the values for the cosine of 120, uh, the cosine of 120 is negative 1 half, the sine of 120 is square root of 3 over 2, so I have the magnitude of vector t sub 2 times uh, negative 1 half times i, vector i, plus the magnitude again, times the square root of 3 over 2 times vector j. All right. Then I'm going to add vector w, which is negative 2,000 times vector j. And this is going to equal, knock on wood, the zero vector. The zero vector, in this case, has magnitude zero, so it'd be, it'd be like um, zero times i. and 0 times j. Well, this is kind of where it's, it's kind of weird. You kind of do like a like term thing. You see how on this side, this guy here and this guy here, they are in terms of vector i, and then over here, this guy here is in terms of vector i. So it's kind of like you're setting the coefficients equal to one another. So I have the square root of 2 over 2 times the magnitude of vector T sub, uh, T sub 1, that's from this guy, 
and then I have minus one half times the magnitude of vector t sub two, and that's it, and that's got equal zero. So far, so good. I don't know if you can see this one coming, but what I'm going to try to do is come up with a system of equations. Now, my second one, and I'm going to use a different color pen. I'm going to take this one, and this one, and this one. See how they're all in terms of vector j? And I'm also going to set it equal to zero. So that's going to give me, it's going to be a little messy now. This is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 times the magnitude of vector t sub 1. Um, here, uh, plus the square root of 3 over 2 times the magnitude of vector t sub 2 minus 2,000 is equal to 0. Now, here's where it gets a little different. I'm going to use my skills of solving the system. Now, I'm not crazy about the fractions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through by 2, and I get the square root of 2 times the magnitude of vector t sub 1 minus oops, the magnitude of vector t sub 2 is equal to 0. Now down here I'm going to multiply by 2 also to get rid of it, but I'm also going to throw the 2,000 on the other side, which is going to become 4,000. And I get the square root of 2 times the magnitude of vector t sub 1 plus the square root of 3 times the magnitude of vector t sub 2 is equal to 4,000. Now, that's a little confusing. It just looks messy. You're used to solving systems, but you're used to solving systems with x's and y's. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to let x represent the magnitude of vector t sub 1, and I'm going to let y represent the magnitude of vector t sub 2. This is just Purely for algebraic, uh, you know, to simplify this, make uh, the, the solving of the system a little bit simpler. We'll plug back in in just a second, but I'm going to plug in here. That would give me the square root of 2 times x minus y equals 0. Down here, this would give me the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 3 times y equals 4,000. I'm going to take this guy here, I'm going to solve for y, I get y is equal to, let's write this as x times the square root of 2, and let's plug that in right here. As messy as it's going to look, I'm just using substitution. So now I have x times the square root of 2, plus I have the square root of 3 times x times the square root of 2, okay, is equal to 4,000. So, <coughs> x to the square root of 2 plus x to the square root of 6 is equal to 4,000. I'm going to factor out the x. This is some weird, wild stuff. And then I'm going to divide through by whatever this number is. And hopefully, and I did not bring my calculator again, so hopefully I have it written down someplace on a piece of paper. I get x to be... 1,035.3 to the nearest tenth. 1,035.3 to the nearest tenth. Let's see. This is about 1.4, 2. Point, I don't know, 2.4 something. It's about 3.8. Yeah, that makes about sense. That looks about right. Okay. But it's in the ballpark anyway. Now I can take this and I can plug back in. Let's say I'm going to plug it back into here. And I get y is equal to approximately 1,035.3 times the square root of 2. And I get y to be approximately, and again, I don't have this one memorized, so it turns out to be 1,464.14. 1,464.14. Now, if we were solving for x and y, 
golden, but we're not. We're solving for their magnitudes because that's what it's asking for. Find the magnitudes of the tension vectors, T sub 1 and T sub 2. And so now I've got to plug back in. In for X, I have the magnitude of T sub 1 to be 1,035.3. It does say to the nearest pound, so to the nearest pound, we're going to approximate this to 1,035. And the magnitude of vector 2, I'm plugging this in here for y, and I get 1,464.14, and this is approximately 1,464, and this would also be in terms of pounds. So now all I have to do is answer the question. I know that this looks like it's an answer, but it's a story problem. Take a second to write it out. So the magnitudes... of the tension vectors T sub 1 and T sub 2 uh, are 1,035 pounds and 1,464 pounds respectfully, respectively, respectfully, respectively. And that answers the problem. And I believe, unless I'm missing something, I think we have finally finished all the videos that we need for uh, the, uh, the section on vectors. So hopefully uh, you've taken the time to watch these, and uh, it's time to practice some problems if you haven't already gotten after this.